Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome to the Elevate Your Soul podcast. Today, I'm interviewing Daniela Gill. She is a transformative psychic, having insight through the Akashic Records, which transcends the limitations of the ordinary human mind and more closely resembles the perspective of God and Source. She is devoted to empowering others, elevating human consciousness, and embodying greater love, trust, and possibility. Today, Daniela and I touch on so many different topics and dive into these Akashic records. We touch on things such as soulmate relationships, how to decipher between intuition and your ego, the cause of disease in the body, how to heal our bodies and our planet, and likely visions of what's to come in our near and distant future for humanity and so much more juicy, interesting things. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast episode and let me know what you think. You can find Daniela on Facebook at Daniela Gill or find her on Instagram at Daniela Gill Love or on her website where you can book your own Akashic Records reading at daniellagill.love.com. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, Daniela. Welcome to the Elevate Your Soul podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. First question of the day, what elevates your soul? Hmm. I would say love, love in all its forms. I love experiencing love through connecting to the Akashic Records. I love meditating. I love connecting with others, feeling their heart, creating really beautiful intimacy with others. Mm. I love dancing. I love food. (laughs) Appreciation, that totally elevates me. Anytime I come into a space of deep appreciation and I allow myself to connect with what it is that I'm appreciating, like really bring it into my mind, into my emotions, into my body, that elevates me. Ooh, working out, cardio, getting my heart rate up, exploring the world, meeting new people, having new experiences. I love it. We're on the mm. same page. <laughs> <laughs> so for mm. the listeners, for people who have never heard of the Akashic Records before, can you describe to us what they are? The Akashic Records are the subtle energetic imprint of everything that's ever happened, everything that is happening and everything that could happen. So Akashic records, the word Akasha is a Sanskrit word for ethers or space, which refers to the primordial element. It's the original substance. It's what existed before the Big Bang. It's what holds the totality of the Big Bang and what gave rise to the Big Bang. That is Akasha. And then all the ancient, well, many ancient traditions, religions, cultures had this idea that there was this ethereal cosmic recording of sorts where that had the recording of everything that has ever happened, is happening, and could happen. And those are the Akashic records. Wow. And what does that sound like? for you, like when you're opening the Akashic records and you're receiving messages, is it, is it noise? Like, do you hear people talking to you in English or is it a sensation or a feeling or like, how do you, um, how do you master that gift that you have and how do you channel those messages? So So I felt three questions in there. One is how I receive the guidance and I receive it in an infinite number of ways. Sometimes it's a spontaneous knowing. Sometimes it feels like I'm in a virtual reality of sorts where I'm looking around and it's like I'm in a movie and I can see something that is occurring, perhaps an experience that somebody else had. 
Yeah. Oftentimes when I am connecting with someone and offering them a one-on-one -on -one Akashic reading, I'll experience what they're experiencing as if it were happening to me. And I will have the emotions that they have around it or the thoughts or the feelings. And at the same time, I'll simultaneously be holding a higher perspective on it, like an elevated awareness of what is actually going on, what's unconscious, what is not right. being seen by the person within the circumstance, but also being offered a thorough, comprehensive experience of the circumstance so that I can fully understand it. Sometimes it is like very clear, just words, a string yeah. of words. Other times it's feelings in my body. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's just knowing, it's just a spontaneous knowing. Right. That's so interesting. And can, like who can channel the Akashic records? So in terms of human beings, it feels like, as long as we are in the human mind, as long as we are in the human body, we cannot actually access the purity of the Akashic records because the Akashic records are infinity and eternity. They right. are the totality of the Big Bang. And it is so beyond the comprehension of the human mind. It could never possibly grasp or hold infinity and eternity. These are concepts beyond what the mind is designed for, which is to make sense of this seemingly limited and linear human experience. But we can come into elevated states of consciousness, which mo more closely resemble the Akashic records. And I feel that anybody can do this. This is our birthright. Any human being can do this. However, it does require some prerequisites. And one of them is to have a pure heart, pure intentions for accessing the Akashic records and accessing this all-knowing space. Yeah. The other one is the capacity to come into a meditative state of mind where we're silencing the chatter and we're allowing ourselves to be receptive and open to the messages yeah. that come through. So we have to be very sensitive and very, very perceptive. I would say the other part of it is the capacity to set aside our personality and our beliefs, our thoughts, our ideas, yeah. all of our expectations, judgments. To have a fluid relationship with that aspect of ourselves also helps us access the Akashic records. Right, to let go of the, the subconscious beliefs, the ego, everything, so that you can actually channel in this Akashic Records. Yeah, that's amazing. And have yeah. you always been able to um, receive the messages from the Akashic Records? Like, has this been something that you've had your whole life or have you discovered this at a later age? I feel like I felt a lot when I was younger, very psychically open and sensitive. And then I've always been deeply feeling and empathic and psychically open, but I don't think I actually came into that elevated of a state until I, I read a book on the Akashic Records and then asked my mom if I could open her Akashic Records. I called her on the phone, asked her, said the prayer, and I think that was really the first time, and that was only a few years ago. Wow. If we open up the Akashic Records on this podcast call. Um, are you able to do that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Are you, yeah, do you need to do your prayer or anything like that before we go in? Yes, I will. I will say my prayer. Okay. The first part is out loud, and yep. then the second part is silent, and then I'll announce when the records are open. Okay. Spirit, support me in coming into an elevated expanded state of consciousness so that I may come into vibrational alignment with your perspective. Set aside the totality of my personality. So that I may serve as a clear channel for your divine loving guidance and knowing. Allow me to see the elevate your soul listeners as they are seen in the light of the Akashic records. Help me to know, elevate your soul, listeners, as they are known in the mind of God. 
and enable me to share all of the communication of Elevate Your Soul listeners, masters, teachers, and loved ones with integrity, clarity, and love. And so it is, the Akashic Records are now open. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. The first question I have, I feel like a lot of people would want to know is how can we decipher between what our ego is and, you know, our fear-based thoughts and what they're telling us over our intuition and what our intuition is telling us? Like, how do we know when we're following our intuition and our heart? And how do we know when it's just fear getting in the way? Sometimes fear or ego carries with it stories of the past, of what was, of what you have already experienced and is projecting that into the present moment or into the future. Your intuition, your soul understands the quantum nature of this reality. So it is always communicating to you from a place of infinite possibility, knowing that absolutely anything is possible. The knowing of intuition is, it feels warm. It's like the depths of intuition know that all is well and that anything is possible for you and that you are so worthy of all of your dreams. And if you can dream it, then you can achieve it. And this experience is one of, of limitless possibility. And you are the painter of your experience, constantly co-creating with life. There's this blank canvas in front of you in which you can paint anything. And that's the way intuition speaks. Yeah. Meanwhile, the voice of the ego or fear sometimes tends to be, it feels like an energy drain at times. It feels very different for everybody. Very, very different for everybody. So I'm seeing like, you know, a million different examples of how it could arise and what that could be experienced like and what it could feel like. Okay. But when we set the intention to hear the voice of our intuition, then that is the voice that we will hear. And it is important when we hear this voice to honor it and to listen to it and to move forward with what it is that our intuition says. This is how we learn to trust our intuition, to know that it is our intuition speaking to us. And this is how we allow that voice to become louder and more clear. We empower the, our intuition by honoring it. And do we power our ego by listening to that? Yeah, when we, it's whatever we're feeding. So whatever we listen to, we're feeding it energy. Okay. And whatever we feed energy grows. So it can be challenging at times initially to begin to listen more to the intuition because there's already a lot of energy behind the fear. Yeah. And the limiting beliefs. They have a lot of momentum. So we need to be patient with ourselves and in this process and consistently begin to choose love over fear, choose expansion, choose infinite possibility, and know that every time we do that, we're creating new neural pathways in the brain and our body is learning, our minds, our spirits are learning this new way of interfacing with reality and of making decisions. And we will start to feel safer and safer following our intuition because we'll see that our intuition never leads us astray. And sometimes it leads us to take these this big, make these really big, bold, courageous decisions and they can be terrifying or they could like not make any sense at all. Like, you know, quit your job and go travel. Just voices like that. Like, Oh, but I can't cause this, cause that all these limiting beliefs, all this fear. Yet if you actually do it, you see that if you leap, the net will appear. It always does. Life never drops you. And if it has seems that life has dropped you, then you're not really done. And the example that's, coming to mind now is when I committed myself to doing spiritual work and I decided I'm not going to work any other job ever again, I racked up a ton of debt. And 
that might appear like life had dropped me, but my interpretation of that debt was, oh, wow, now I have to make 20,000 extra dollars this year doing this work. So that means I have to provide $20,000 worth of extra value. And I allowed it to inspire me and to be like the fire under my ass to move me forward in ways that were scary, to put myself out there. And if I didn't have that $20,000 debt looming over me, I maybe I wouldn't have have taken some of the risks or been as courageous in my moving yeah. forward in my spiritual work than I had been. Yeah. So really everything is always a blessing and life never drops you no matter what decision you make according to your intuition, as long as it's aligned with your intuition, which is always aligned with the totality of life because your intuition is interconnected with all. Meanwhile, fear is only worried about itself. It's separation. The ego experiences itself as separate. All right. I love that. That makes total sense. Can we have more than one soulmate in a lifetime? And are soulmates meant to stick with us for our entire life journey? Or are soulmates meant to only stick around for part of the time? And are there multiple soulmates that we can have in our lifetime? Mm, I love this question. A lot of people wonder about this one. So from a Kashic perspective, anything is possible. But then when I work with individual clients, it feels like some people have a relationship that feels very destined. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's a lifelong relationship, but there has been some sort of agreement between two souls before they incarnate where there is a very, very, very high likelihood that they will meet and experience some sort of cataclysmic type of relationship that serves the evolution of both of their souls yes. in a really powerful way. And they will feel that magnetic attraction with a lot of intensity where it's completely irresistible. And in terms of soulmates, that word has so many different definitions associated with it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we are all, at the end of the day, we're all one. So from a Kashi perspective, from a higher perspective, every being that you meet and every person that you're looking at is another aspect of you and part of the one. Yes. So from that perspective, from that like very, very elevated perspective, every single being on earth is your soulmate. Yeah. Every single moment is your soulmate. And then what I see is that for some people, going really deep with one person is so relevant for them in this lifetime that really serves their soul and that is their highest alignment. Yes. And then for what I see is that for the m many other people, there's relevance to explore many relationships at a very, very, very deep level. Yes. And, and like, what could be a soulmate? It's like, we have so many lifetimes, right? We like are constantly evolving and shifting and growing and reincarnating. And what I often see is that someone will be married for 20 years. Like this is an example from a client that I've been working with now. She was married 20 years um, separated from her husband. But then I see like her and her husband have this love story that transcends lifetimes. Like lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, they're meeting each other and having these relationships. So they're like the most epic eternal soulmates that are so close and they just love to dance together in life. They love to get together in life. Yet in this lifetime, they had a 20 year marriage, they had a family and now it's, now they're choosing to have like this time of separation. Yeah. So yeah, we all do have many, many soulmates. Absolutely. Um, there's no way we could have just one. No. But for some people, yeah, you meet someone when you're young, you marry them, and then you're with them forever. But then like our pets are our soulmates. Yes. <laughs> it depends how we define soulmates. It's like we're so attached to this one experience of the one beloved and it's so deeply limiting. And then I feel like it closes people off sometimes to have these deeply rewarding and fulfilling, emotionally intimate relationships with other people in their lives yeah. because they think that it's reserved for the one. But I mean, this 
God is in everyone and love is in everyone. And these opportunities to, to get close to people are everywhere and they are so rewarding and fulfilling. And that is really what I think humanity needs to experience healing Yes. at the time, like intimacy with others, community, like really feeling and experiencing the love. And that is not, it's not singular. It's not for just your relationship with one person. It is your relationship with all life, with all beings, seeing the beloved in every moment in the cashier at the grocery store, Yeah. Um, you know, in your pet and in, in everything and the food that you're eating. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand that. And that the way you explained that made me think of another question. So for um, some people, some souls in this lifetime, or depending on which lifetime the same soul is in, in one lifetime, they may have, if I use the word soulmate again, I mean by having these deep emotional relationships, one soul might have more in their lifetime than another soul in that lifetime. Absolutely. It's, everybody has like different dharma we can learn a lot from learning our astrology from a highly skilled astrologer or or just getting a session with a skilled akashic record reader yeah because we'll see that (laughs) thank you um we'll see that like the you everybody has this unique dharma and this unique karma and for some people it's relevant for a lot of their energy to go into their work in the world perhaps yeah. creating some epic business and other people if they have a lot of planets in the house of relationships their relationships are going to be really important and that's they're going to have to make that a priority in order to feel really fulfilled in life and in order to realize their dharma and something that i love that liberates something that is very liberating in akashic record readings is sometimes people have these ideas because of what culture society says that they need some like big life purpose Mm -hmm. that is like their work in the world, like some sort of career, some sort of work. But sometimes when you feel into the essence of someone and their soul and their soul's intention, like what is your highest possibility dharmic pathway? You might see like, wow, you are the most extraordinary mother to these two little boys. And these two little boys are like these light workers who are here to elevate the consciousness of humanity, which is so important at this time because of the state of the earth and the state of humanity at this time. And you'll see that that, like that is the dharmic path. That is the great work and nothing beyond that needs to be done in order for you to realize your greatest fulfillment. And if you ever doubt that it's because you're holding the messages of of society in your minds that like it's somehow less than like how did we ever ever come up with that that like being a parent and only being a parent to householders in any way less than but i i see that internalized feeling sometimes in in householders yeah in yeah i hope you were just describing my future because i want boys (laughs) (laughs) and i just want to be a stay-at-home mom so i was like maybe she was channeling my future maybe (laughs) Wow, that totally could have been it. Because <laughs> I don't know where it came from. <laughs> All right. Next question I have is should people should we avoid places and events and people and things that trigger us in life? Or should we lean in towards them in or, in order to learn and evolve? And how do you know when something is meant for you and you know, you're meant to overcome something and learn a lesson from it, or if it's like, if it's there to challenge you for the better, or if it's just not meant for you and you, you need to, you know, either put your foot down and, and turn in the other direction and avoid it. If something, if anything is triggering you and you have like an emotional reaction, yeah, a reaction that takes you off balance, that feels like, ah, then it is triggering a wound. And any time a wound is triggered, the light of your awareness gets shown on the wound. Mm-hmm. Wounds cannot and will not heal until we are aware of them. So these triggers are beautiful to lean into because they offer this opportunity for healing. Yeah. We know that a trigger is unnecessary when it's not necessarily 
Well, man, there's so many different aspects of this. Sometimes it's just, it's merely not our preference. Like, it's like we're experiencing something and you just, you're aware that it's not your preference and you don't have to subject yourself to it. And it can be really important to free ourselves from codependency, thinking that we need to interact with someone or show up for someone or do something for someone, even though we don't feel alignment with it or we don't really want to. Right. Ultimately, what is good for our hearts is good for all hearts. Yes. So that is important to know when it comes to determining whether, yeah, whether we can lean into something uncomfortable or, or walk away. And it's, it's truly a paradox because as I look at it right now, it feels like there could be so much value in perhaps continuing to engage in a relationship that's challenging. You'll continue to learn, continue to learn, but, but what is it that you want to learn? There's nothing that you really have to learn. And then how do you want to learn? Do you want to learn with ease and grace or do you want to learn with this really dramatic, challenging, chaotic relationship you can you can learn and grow either way and that's your choice and from a Kashic perspective neither way is more preferable right I feel like sorry when it comes to relationships um it would uh would it depend on the other person they're in a relationship in with as well or yeah absolutely because that other person everyone is a mirror but nobody is a clear mirror the only clear mirror is the pure consciousness of God, universe, creator, source, divine intelligence, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, And some people reflect to you the ugly parts of yourself. And then some people reflect the beautiful parts of yourself. So you get to choose what mirror you want to look in. (laughs) And people's expectations of us and beliefs of us impact us. So if someone has like a really beautiful vision of you, it's probably going to be really pleasant and delightful to spend time with them. And then you get to experience yourself from that beautiful perspective. So of course you're going to be drawn to that. And it is totally your prerogative here on earth to choose out those people and to step away from other people who don't see you in that light. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Next question is, I want to talk about manifesting and manifestation and how we can manifest our desires in life. Ooh, well, manifestation is creation and creation always, well, human creation, right? Always requires a sperm and an egg. And that is symbolic for like feminine and masculine essence. So the feminine essence is the force of attraction, the force of magnetism, of having faith, of having trust. So what is that? That is the frequency that we're holding in our thoughts and in our beliefs because that sends out these chemical messengers to the world. That is our point of attraction. That is the feminine essence. So we need that, that, that trust, that belief, that mindset, that energy that is emanating from us, then we will receive inspiration that will guide us towards whatever it is we want to manifest. And then we actually have to take action in alignment with that inspiration. I see often in the Akashic records that people have uh, glorified one aspect of manifestation over the other but it requires balance of both and don't underestimate how important it is to really cultivate the consciousness that can hold the manifestation that you're calling in that is a really important aspect of manifestation and then of course we have to take action but the action cannot be forceful because divine timing is important as well. We have to be ready to receive our manifestation. And not only do we have to be ready, all of life has to be ready. I had this really interesting reading with someone where this woman was wanting to step into her role and she's super powerful and super clear. And she's like the spiritual healer teacher. And I don't remember what she was wanting to create, but some like really big offering, like a movie or like some book. And 
what was happening at the time was although she in some ways was ready, her audience was still getting ready and the world was still getting ready to receive her book. So the divine timing would have been the harmony where, where her readiness meets, meets the readiness of those who will be impacted by her manifestation. Right. So it's not just us. It's always a co-creation. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. When it, when I think of manifestation and manifesting our desires, I think of the law of attraction. And I hear that the law of attraction is the law we live in on this world's earth today. I'm wondering if you know, if there are any other laws to that relate to us and human beings on our current life on earth other than the law of attraction wow i feel like there are an infinite number of laws and some laws some laws feel like they apply more to some people than others according to what it is that they're learning okay. in this experience of life yet all laws are impacting everybody it feels like like i'm just making things up right now like there's like a law of flow and a law of interdependence and like divine union, which is the truth of this reality that everything that we do is impacting the totality of all. And we are constantly being impacted by the totality of all. Yeah. So there, so right now the collective is moving out of codependence into independence and then into interdependence. And of course, a lot of people on this spiritual journey, on this spiritual path, committed to their spiritual growth, are what you might call ahead of the game. So they've moved out of codependence into independence more quickly, but, but then there have been these ideas perpetuated around independence that aren't accurate, like nobody can make you feel a certain way. Yeah. Or like you're the one who's solely responsible for your emotions like yes you are the one that is solely responsible for your emotions but absolutely other people make you feel a certain way yeah. everybody has impact on you and we're always impacting each other and that is the law of interdependence once we yeah. move from interdependence we then come into divine union the law of divine union that's actually what we are we are one it's like like i see it as like sacred geometry the way it all comes together in this like perfect divine like harmonious synchronization that is like so beyond the comprehension of the human mind it could never fully grasp it or understand it or really even <laughs> sense or experience it yeah not fully so there's that's a law that feels important as well there is a way you described how we're all one um i've heard you say this before that we're all different cells but on the same body. I just love that analogy. Yeah. Yeah, I feel, I've been feeling that so much lately as I, I just spent time in Hawaii and I know you're there now. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like the earth speaks so clearly there and it, it's becoming so clear that we truly are these separate cells on the same earth body. And yeah the earth is needing, she's needing healing and she's needing us to like honor our interconnectedness and the way in which we're in many ways being held in like her womb. It's like, she's this womb providing for us the air that we breathe and all the food that we eat. And yeah. our well being is dependent upon her. And the more that we pollute her and destroy her, the more we pollute and destroy ourselves. And that's why generally so many of us are so unhealthy at this time because we're the cells of the one same body and I really want to share this download that came through for me recently something that I never thought about it just randomly came in in an Akashic record reading that trash is essentially death so everything that we create all like even not even trash but everything that is like man-made like the way we build homes and cars we are taking resources, we are taking life, we are taking the earth and the cells of this life are just vibrating with life and they're vibrating with like harmony and like wood, for example, or like yeah, leaves, like all of that, you feel the earth, the life, the health, the vitality. And then we take it and we turn it into a product and it turns into more of a vibration of death. 
And what we've been doing is we've been taking so much life, so many cells yeah. from the earth and turning it into death, into death, into death, into death. And, and we're dying. Like we're not healthy for the most part. There's not a lot of vitality here. It's like, oh my God, we're living in this like miraculous, mysterious experience of infinite possibility. And I just love to love and have fun and to play. And like everyone loves to love and have fun and play yet so many people are like so drained of energy yeah. and they're sick and overweight and experiencing different diseases and that is not our nature at all like mm. oh my god look at look at the look at Hawaii like untouched nature is like vibrant and it's like you just feel it in your body and it like turns you on and activates you and it's like delicious like you eat fruit or food produce that has come from healthy earth and it is delicious and then you eat it from like barren earth and it's like ew it's tasteless and I feel like people's lives when I look around sometimes I'm like wow so many passionless like tasteless lives it's like we yeah. just don't have life flowing through us and it's because we have we're destroyed becoming, so much. we're becoming the food we eat right <laughs> All this industrialized farming and these chemicals sprayed on our fruits and <laughs> We're becoming that. Absolutely. And how, yeah, you said, how you said, you know, we're all these different cells, but working on the same body. And, and then your analogy about the, or your idea, concept about the trash and all this garbage being produced is death. And we're taking away life. So as a whole, because we're all one on this planet, we're taking away more life and we're adding more of this death vibration so we're vibrating at a lower frequency so we're being affected by that so people are vibrating at a lower frequency and then that kind of goes into my next question which is why are so many people becoming physically sick and getting these lifestyle diseases these days and what's if you know what's the meaning behind all of it wow yeah i just i just want to say love the way you re reiterated all of that i feel like you just said that so beautifully and that yeah i love that so thank you and okay disease so when i tune into that in akashic record readings one-on-one -on -one for people it looks so different for everybody for some people it's well what we just shared yeah obviously plays a part in it and for some people it's like they're holding on to for some people for other people, it's like they're so afraid of their dharma and of really embracing their passion and living their highest lives that mm. they manifest disease as an excuse, so to speak. Mm. Oftentimes, people are believing they're buying into ideas of victimhood and whatever you believe becomes. So if you believe you're a victim of your genes and you're not yet educated on the nature of epigenetics, which is that our genes are always changing expression, Yeah. then people can have these ideas of being victims of their genes and, and manifest a disease. Sometimes yeah. what I've seen, like I worked with one man who his soul, it felt like chose to create this debilitating disease because that was the place of his learning and through this debilitating disease that left him in so much agonizing pain and unable to move he cultivated like this like buddhist state of consciousness like every time i connect with him we connect via zoom i've never met him in person i feel such deep profound peace and love and i just know that his disease was destiny for him to cultivate this presence and this love because that is the way he is serving humanity by holding that vibrational frequency on behalf of us all. Wow. So that was a really interesting experience of disease. I, my personal experience of disease, I've had Hashimoto's and really bad parasitic infection. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease and yeah, all sorts of health challenges and Mm, it has so many different roots, but one of them for me has just been stagnant energy. Like once I started moving every day, doing breath work, meditating, moving my body, doing cardio, dancing, like consistently moving forward, moving forward, yeah. that moved a lot of the old energy and the old energy represented the old stories and yeah. the stagnation. And a lot of like the ancient Chinese medical system, like, um, acupuncture, all of these ways of healing, it's really just opening up our energy channels and moving energy. 
that's it. Yeah. It's like we're creating this stagnation and and a lot of that to me looks like fear, fear of moving forward in our lives, fear of growth, fear of the unknown, which is really not natural to our being, fear of the unknown. Because what yeah. are we? We are the big bang. We're not like Alan Watts says, we're not a result of the big bang. We are the big bang externally, eternally expanding out into infinity. That's what we are. We are the continuation of the big bang. So that's the big bang is always going out into the unknown. That's our nature. Yes. It's yeah. unnatural to be afraid of, yeah, of the unknown or to not continuously just be expanding and growing. Yeah. Like we the, don't sit stop. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of the Ayurveda, the doshas? Ayurveda of the doshas. The doshas. I, yes. Yeah. Yes. Sahara Rose is high. Energy. Yes. Yeah, you just reminded me with this this stagnant energy you said and how you were moving and like just moving your body. That reminded me of of the kapha needing more vata, like that air energy. Yeah, we absolutely need. Do you understand balance. what I'm saying? Yes, totally. Yes, and I feel that um, that totally resonates. I have a lot of people in my life. I attract a lot of kaphas because I'm vata. I'm like this quick moving pace. And then for the other people as well, um, it's still driven from fear, but we're almost moving too much. And, and there are the, and on, the, on the flip side, there are a lot of people as well in the Western society who are constantly in this mindset of go, 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 move, 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 achieve, achieve, achieve. And they need to learn to slow down and to rest and be more stagnant, right? So there's these two polar opposites and I feel like we're just not balanced on either end. So as humanity, we're just becoming really imbalanced and there's some of us just are too stagnant and not moving and then others are just moving too fast and also moving from fear as well. They're, so they're both fear-driven, they're both fear-based as well and that's what's bringing us um, out of alignment. I guess. Yes. I love that you just, yeah, said all of that. That's a really important part of the creating disease that it really is just like you just said it perfectly. It's just imbalance. Yeah. It's like imbalance. So yeah, there is the other side of that. Yeah. And as you were speaking, I was seeing how the balance between the three doshas or the balance just in the energy of the body and how yeah, for, for me, it was like, I need to move energy. And for other people, it's like sitting down, like too much vata, too much, you know, yeah. wind, yeah. needing to meditate, to ground. Yeah. And to listen to the, like, to listen to our bodies too. Like mm. our bodies have this brilliance to it. And every, it's so popularized at this time to not listen to the body and to tell the body, shut up and to completely disconnect from the body. And we see that in pharmaceutical drugs, yep. which manipulate and quite honestly destroy the body yes. in many ways. And the way in which every morning it's coffee, 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 that's a major manipulation. It's when the body's like, oh, yeah. I'm tired. We essentially say, shut up. No, you're not. And then yeah. at night taking the ambient or drinking the bottle of wine, it's yeah. like, you're tired. <laughs> Go to sleep now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or like going out at night, it's like, I'm going to drink a Red Bull and it's so normalized. And this yeah. is absolutely disconnects us from our bodies. And then we don't listen. We don't hear when our body's like, I need this. I need that because the body knows how to create perfect, yeah. radiant, optimal health. And what the body is capable of is so much more than I ever imagined at this I'm in the best health I've ever been in and I've suffered so much with health and I only need to sleep a few hours a night and I feel like I have boundless energy Yeah, and I feel so emotionally stable. And when I was a teenager, people thought I was bipolar and I was like on antidepressants because my body was in such a bad state of health Yeah, and I needed like Adderall to pay attention. Now I can like meditate for hours and like, wow. You know, and all the, yeah, it's just the health of the body. And it's really just listening, yeah. listening, listening. The Pasana meditation helped me a lot with that, but constantly being like, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And then giving it to your body because your body is your home. That is where you live. You cannot, if you make a mess in your home or if you trash your home, it's no big deal. You can like leave 
buy a new home, whatever. But like your body is a home that you can never leave. And it determines how you feel, your neurochemistry, the state of your digestion, the straight state of like your health is always determining how you feel. Yeah. So it's of utmost important that we create these really beautiful relationships to our body where we are honoring the messages and really listening and not manipulating the body because that is a really fast way to bring the body off balance, which then leads Brings to the world disease. off balance as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love, I love how you said like, it's, it's like this, this new fad in the Western world to not listen to your body. And how you said with the pharmaceutical industry, it's it's so incredibly true. And I see it as well in the fitness world. Um, I'm a member of a gym and I love, love, love the idea of group fitness. But like I like the one thing that I don't like so much is some instructors, not all of them, but they're totally in this this mode like don't listen, like basically don't listen to your body. Like if you're feeling fatigued, like mind over body, like use your mind, go, go, go. (laughs) It's just like, no, I'm listening to my body. I feel like I've done too much. And if I like continue, you know, working hard out, then I'm not going to have any energy to do anything else for the rest of the day. So, you know, no, I'm actually going to preserve some of this energy right now. But when you're in these, you know, in these classes and these gyms, they're just like, you know, mind over body, go, 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 push harder, push harder. And it's not what everyone needs, right? Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. The Yeah. The body has like, it's so true. And the body has this really beautiful wisdom to it. It's so, okay. The body knows what the spirit, like what the mind doesn't know. Like the body is super psychic. So the body actually knows what's coming. So like it's happened to me where I have the desire to just eat a ton of food. And then what comes later is that I don't have any access to like healthy food for a really long time. So I'm like, whoa, Mm. there I was thinking that my body was betraying me by basically having me like stuff myself, but really my body knew what was coming. Mm. And I've had like, I once had the craziest, I I, like feel so shy about sharing this because it's ridiculous, (laughs) but whatever, we're all (laughs) one. So like, what am I hiding from? (laughs) Um, So I was in Bali and I got... I just got so constipated to the point where like, it was so uncomfortable. Like I felt awful and randomly I was passing this restaurant and my body was like, eat there. I want you to eat here. And I was like, what? No, like, no. And my body was like, do it, do it, just do it. And I was like, oh my God, you're so weird. Okay, fine. (laughs) So I go to this like kind of crappy looking restaurant in Bali and it's like, okay, now order the eggs. I'm like, what? I don't even really eat eggs. Like at the time I wasn't eating eggs. It was like, order this. So I did. And I got very mild, like very, very, very mild food poisoning where I just got like diarrhea. And, but like, it was super mild. It wasn't that bad, but like it it healed my constipation. And I felt so good. I felt so good. I was like, oh my God, this is the best because the constipation was so unbearable. I felt so uncomfortable. And I was like, whoa, the body is psychic as fuck. And I'm going to honor the like weird intuitive hits of the body from now on because my body knew (laughs) that it had like just the perfect bacteria to just like get everything out. Yeah. Oh my God. I love that so much. I love that. How like, yeah, sometimes your intuition or like, and, and sometimes it's not even intuition. So it's, it's, it's not, it's not like this psychic, like, Oh, I just had a vision that this is going to happen in 24 or 48 hours from now. So that makes sense that I'm doing this now. Like the way it works is like, I have no idea why the fuck I'm doing this right now. And then later it pans out. You're like, Oh, now it made sense why I was like, super hungry that day or super not hungry that day or why I felt like going into this place that I normally would never go into or why I booked that plane ticket or why I talked to that person on the street. And then you find out later, like, oh, okay, it makes sense now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's like the body knows and it never leads us astray. Yeah. However, it gets confusing when we are harboring addictions and then we confuse our addictions for the body. Like, um, if we have certain bacteria in the body or certain parasites, yes, it's they, we all, the only reason we have them in the body is because we've been feeding them. Right. And we feed them through our thoughts, our behaviors, and our food. Right. 
And then if that can create like kind of different desires or different impulses that seem to be coming from the body, but they're not the actual healthy, vibrant cells of the body. They're like these more parasitic type of entities that are in a sense living in the body, but don't have the body's best interests at heart. Right. Because as you're saying, whatever you feed, you're giving energy to. So it's because you've been feeding these addictions for so long. They have, they're so powerful and hold so much energy within you that it's hard to decipher if it's really what your body is craving and what it's needing or if it's an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, it was really hard to decipher between that. Uh, I've had major parasitic infections and two doctors have told me that I had the worst case of candida overgrowth they've ever seen oh. because I took antibiotics every day for four years because oh, I had, no. I had mild acne and I was living in Florida and I wasn't really educated. I mean, I was studying psychology. I didn't know anything about, you know, medical science and multiple doctors told me it was fine. So, wow. So I struggled with that a lot. And what helped, what really helped liberate me was a two week, a 14 day water fast. Yeah. That's a lot. That just reset everything. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I did that at a fasting center. I went to yeah. Tanglewood Fasting Center in Costa Rica. He recommended for me a minimum of 21, but on day 10, I was ready to eat. Day 14, I like demanded food. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there on day three. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Another question I have is which direction, if you can see, if, if you can see um, or get any messages, which direction is humanity steering towards in either the near or the distant future? So it feels like near, near future, what is likely is some chaos and destruction. It feels important at this time that we destroy some of the systems that we have in place that don't have our best interests at heart and don't understand the nature of reality or the actual capacity of the human being which is like the medical industry has no idea what the body is capable of. Yeah. Um, completely oblivious. It doesn't understand the genius. Okay. I don't want to say completely oblivious. I know that that's going to trigger so many people and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I'm just, yeah. I've really yeah. been hurt by the medical industry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the medical industry doesn't, there's so much that is beyond the comprehension of the human mind that is just totally magical within the body and the body's capacity to heal and the role that consciousness plays in our healing. And I'm so grateful for beings like Joe Dispenza, who is popularizing that we are the placebo effect and the ways in which our consciousness can lead to accelerated, seemingly miraculous healing or spontaneous remissions, which mm. are pretty much not really given that much emphasis to in the medical industry, but that's really what we're capable of. So, so a destruction of the medical industry of like, you know, the governments, like yeah. once, once we're all in an elevated state of consciousness, we automatically behave in ways that are on behalf of the best interests of all, because right. we know that everyone is an aspect of us and their best interest is actually your best interest. Yeah. So the government, um, the educational system, like the food industry, all the systems that don't understand how to behave in ways that are benevolent and truly serving of each other. All of that is going to need to be destroyed, which might look really, really chaotic for a while and be really gnarly for people. And it feels like that's, that's a likelihood, but it's ultimately a blessing. And it's exactly what we need. And on the other side of that is an experience that more closely resembles heaven on earth, more of a utopia. It's, it's really beautiful. That's what we're capable of. And that's a quantum Akashic possibility and reality. And it feels like the more that we do this work and the more that we have podcasts like this, the more that we like channel this insight in, the more momentum we create towards the creation of that, the more we feed that possibility. And in terms of far future, like, there are moments where I feel like 
it's almost like apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. And then there are moments where I'm like, whoa, we are going to co-create Eden together. Like this is going to be awesome. But sometimes it feels like there's like an increasingly, increasingly more division where people are coming into higher and higher states of consciousness and like truly living heaven on earth. Yes. Yes. And then other people are just like in these hells. Yeah. Like total hell. But we're all living on the same earth. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all, the full spectrum is all here. And your individual experience, you don't have to, I mean, you're always going to be affected by the collective human experience, but, but I'm, yeah, lately I've truly been meeting these people where I'm like, whoa, and been in these like, you know, little communities that really feel so beautiful. Mm, Beautiful. I love that. Are there any other messages that you have that we haven't touched on today? Yeah, what's coming through right now is how loved, how loved you are. Like truly how loved you are. And that love is apparent in every breath that you take, which is brimming with oxygen, which is a gift that was created for you by the plant kingdom. It's apparent in every bite of food that you eat. And it's apparent in everything. Everything that exists, exists to serve because it's all an aspect of you. And all of your challenges are actually these tremendous opportunities and blessings. It is all taking you to exactly where it is you said that you wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And please trust, trust life, trust the process Open your eyes to perceive the love and open your heart to perceive the love. This will make your life journey infinitely easier. And know that anything is possible for you. And know that there's so much more to this life than what we can see. And if you choose, so much of it is in our beliefs, right? So if we choose to believe that we have spirit guides, that we have angels, an ethereal support team. And then we ask that ethereal support team for help. That's exactly what we'll get. So you always have access to this ethereal support team and you can ask for support. You can ask for help. You can ask for guidance. It's, you know, ask and you shall receive, but then really open to receive. You have to ask with trust. You have to ask with faith. Mm. There's nothing that you have to do here in life. There really are no shoulds. And it's time that we all liberate ourselves from the conditioning of our parents, our culture, our family, our society, thinking that there is one preferable way to be or to live or one preferable thing that we have to become. It's like you can become anything and you can constantly be reinventing yourself. And the truth is that every morning you are born anew. Every moment you are born anew, you're constantly being rebirthed in this experience of life. And you're not held back by your past. It's it's merely an illusion that you're perpetuating when you think that just because the way things were is how they will be. Just because they were that way means that's how it will continue to be. That is your creation. So much. We have so much more power than we have ever really embrace like you are powerful beyond measure you are divinity embodied and because of that you are perfect as you are and of course it's a paradox because if if you were perfect why would you have to expand out into the big bang and continue to grow and expand um so yeah at the end of the day from a kashic perspective everything is a paradox and and you're loved <laughs> beautiful beautiful yeah. Is there something we can do to elevate your soul? Love yourself. Love yourself and take such good care of yourself. The more that you love yourself, the more that you love others. And the more that you care for yourself, the more fully resourced you are. And when you're fully resourced, you can care for others. Yes. This is of utmost importance. And there is so much to love about you. Beautiful. Truly. Beautiful. How can we find you online and on social media? Ooh, I would love to connect with you online. Please reach out to me on social media. On Instagram, it is Daniela Gill Love. And my name is spelled with one L in Daniela, one L in Gill. And on Facebook, ooh, 
I think it's Daniela Gil Akashic or Daniela Gil Love. Yeah, okay. I would love to connect with you on Facebook. I post a lot of videos on Facebook. Okay. And also you can visit my website to book a one-on-one -on -one session. It is my favorite thing to do. Um, two things I love to do. One-on-one -on -one sessions with people. We go so deep. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. And I also train people in how to access the Akashic Records. And a lot of people come to it with a lot of insecurity thinking that they're not capable, but truly anybody is. And it is a life changing practice to be able to access this high vibrational energy and this perspective. My life radically changed in my first three months of accessing the Akashic Records. Like yeah. everything changed. I was like dead broke, like just sick, like so confused, like not fully connected to my dharma. Full candida. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like years before. Right. By that point, I was already like a yoga teacher and a breathwork facilitator, but yeah. I was doing the work. I was like, you know, doing the Vipassana meditations and like everything I could, but the Akashic yeah. really changed everything for me. Wow. So, but yeah, that's all on my website and I'd love to share with you guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm sure some of my listeners will jump on board and yeah, have a reading with you. That would be amazing. I'll definitely book in a reading with you sometime. Yay, I can't wait. Yay. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Thank you. I love this experience and I love sharing and yeah, it's really beautiful. So thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.